Hello everyone, welcome back to GGN. This is part two for this news report today for Monday, May 27th, 2013, and I'm Darko, I'm ready to go. How Guantanamo Bay's existence helps Al-Qaeda recruit more terrorists. It holds clear de uh, detainees and it's becoming a rallying point and jihadist propaganda. So it says here that Guantanamo has entered headlines again as at least 42 inmates are participating in a hunger strike to protest their continued detention, but those 42 are uh, only a part of the ongoing story, so there's still 166. Yeah, they're being force-fed. So it's not just Guantanamo, it's the drone strikes. They're increasing um, uh, jihadists. So MI6 chief's uh, chilling warning. We cannot stop terror attacks. The security forces are virtually powerless to stop atrocities like the Wool Woolwich murder, uh, says here a former MI6 chief. And they go in there and start talking about how they're spying <clears throat> basically on all these people and how it's not going to do anything. Uh, but it doesn't really matter because they're still going to push more CCT, uh, TV cameras or surveillance or online monitoring. Uh, Woolwich murder sparks anti-Muslim backlash. This was, again, this was part of the plan, I think. There's been a large increase in anti-Muslim incidences since the murder of uh, drummer Lee Rigby in Wool Woolwich. So... Um, What's interesting, though, is um, that just uh, different points to be made here. Is that, uh, you know, how many people are killed, innocent people, uh, by the UK, by the US, by France? And uh, these same people, they don't, uh, they're not out protesting. They're not out like, well, you know, this is inhumane, this is wrong, until it meets them uh, face to face. Like I said, they're going to be used. Um, they're going to be used, uh, basically, for this uh, anti Muslim sentiment. Uh, again, as, as, far in, as far as it being a hoax and that, I don't know. Um, but, uh, you know, it's like one commenter said, you know, he uh, was, uh, was this person dead? It was like, yes. He thinks that the body was just drug out there and it was like a big set. Um, he said uh, that the body was already dead when it was drug out there. Um, and uh, so you still had a, a real, you had a dead body, you had a, a grieving family. They probably didn't even know that the soldier was already dead. Uh, who really knows, though, you know? You just got to look at the motive, what's going on here. But I do think it's legitimate to at least question these things because, um, you know, it's just to, just to take it for face value. But it does get exhausting, you know, when it's one after another, after another of these incidences. And uh, people don't really want to, you know, just regular people, they don't really want to hear this stuff, you know. EDL activities instigate terrorism in Britain, says survey. So, again, you have all these front groups that are posing as, uh, quote, far-right, uh, 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 you know, conservatives and stuff like that. You always have to have controlled opposition. Tea Party, you got it over here and that. New survey has found that almost two-thirds of Britons, 61%, believe that their activities by far-right groups such as the so-called anti-Islam English Defense League, make terrorist attacks more likely. So, you know, going back to immigration, there's a lot of normal people that have issues with the economy, um, you know, not being part of the EU, um, or for here in the U.S., we don't want to be part of NATO or, or UN or any of that, um, who want um, uh, immigra real immigration reform. And, uh, you know, and so they'll consider them to be extremists. And they're the ones causing attacks. Isn't that funny? No, it's not the, it's not the drone bombs, not the torturing at Guantanamo Bay, uh, it's not the wars uh, for resources and and and, uh, and refugees. It's 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 the far right. That's 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 what's causing the the terrorists to come out of the woodwork. It's not it's not the governments that are funding these terrorists. So it says here in a poll or a survey, it says 64% of voters believe that the UK needed more stringent terrorism laws to prevent such attacks, even though you just heard that uh, that they're not going to be able to stop them, uh, as the once happened a few days ago. The poll, meanwhile, found 63% would support the death penalty for convicted terrorists, and 40% of people said they felt the government should revive plans for the Snooper Charter, uh, the Ditch Communications Data Bill, to secretly monitor communications such as emails. Plus, also, it was what? It was a good. Um, it was good for the politicians. With the UK, UK public giving strong backing to his response to the incident in Woolwich. So, Rupert Murdoch quotes Koran and weird Twitter rant. May have something to do with the murder of UK soldier. But um, says here he tweeted 
uh, with UK on terror alert, Cameron off on holiday, and Ibiza, unbelievable. Many UK tweeters say no terror, uh, admirable, gutsy, but get real and go listen at some mosque, admit most okay, but others really scary. Again, whether these were stage incidences or not, or some kind of psyop, which I'm sure they are, uh, that's why they had to come out and say in both incidences that they were terrorist attacks, because if they were just regular attacks, then people would go to the immigration thing. And then he goes ahead and he makes these quotes get real. Quran says, whoever killed a human being, it should be regarded as having killed all kind. Uh, another quote here, Quran except as punishment for murder or other villainy, then defined as those who wage war against the law, punishable by beheading. So it says, no one's quite sure what he was driving at. Uh, but I think I do. British Deputy Prime Minister quotes the Holy Quran to condemn terrorism. So I'll talk about Nick Clegg, I believe. So it says here he's taking an interesting response uh, to an anti-Muslim current created uh, following the brutal murder of the soldier. And there he goes. He's, uh, he's basically quoting the same thing. So I'm not really sure what they're trying to get at there. Uh, like someone on a comment board wrote out about in this picture here with the EDL protesters with the little uh, star. Zionist flag at the upper uh, left upper corner says it all. This group is pro-Crusader Zionist and most likely funded by them. Woolwich murder probe, thousands at risk of radicalization, says Theresa May. So, so it goes on here and it says that um, she said a new task force would look at whether new powers were needed to tackle uh, radicalization. In Britain, police arrest Twitter and Facebook users if they make anti-Muslim statements. Pol British police are arresting people and uh, says here in the middle of the night if they have made racist or anti-Muslim comments on Twitter following the murder of a soldier by uh, Muslims in Woolwich, London. So does this have to do with free speech? I mean, is this they're just playing like the EDL thing where people will make all this anti-Muslim stuff? And then you got people like um, uh, that Nick Clegg and, uh, and um, Rupert Murdoch saying these things to try to, uh, whatever they're trying to do, uh, to clamp down on uh, uh, online speech or something. Three men have so far been taken into custody for using Twitter and Facebook to crit criticize Muslims. It says here, teenager arrested over Facebook comments about Boston Marathon bombers denied bail. Judges denied bail to a Massachusetts teenager who was arrested on terrorism charges after posting lyrics on his Facebook page suggesting he would do worse than the Boston Marathon bombers. Russia's investigated. See, this is the thing, though. They always like to play the Muslim card, but in all reality, it has to do with domestic surveillance and control of, uh, of people. So, you know, Russia's investigative committee to monitor social networks for criminal cases They'll monitor Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram, along with other social networks, for evidence and reactions on serious crimes. This is uh, Russia's investigative committee. U.S. spy uh, device tested on New Zealand public. High-tech U.S. surveillance tool, which sweeps all communications without a warrant, was sent to New Zealand for testing on the public. The tool is called Thin Thread, and it worked by automatically intercepting phone, email, and Internet information. Irish police will get powers to block mobile phone signals for G8 summit. New laws in the Republic of Ireland are being rushed in ahead uh, of the G8 summit to allow uh, Gardaí to order telecom companies to shut off signals to prevent terrorists using mobile phones to detonate bombs. Then we have uh, Eton College exam asked boys to justify the army shooting protesters dead. It says Eton College asked 13-year-old boys competing for a scholarship to pretend to be prime minister and justify the army shooting dead 25 protesters as a necessary and moral decision that has emerged as part of an exam to win one of the 14 King's scholarships. Obama officials are criminalizing journalism. So the Obama regime has been accused of criminalizing the press as U.S. lawmakers called for an independent investigator to look into the way the Justice Department conducts cases involving reporters. After a soldier is slaying Britain's Britain uh, forms extremism task force, so they're forming a task force that will examine the dynamics behind extremist groups, a general focus on extremist groups, but accept that in practice the greatest threat is from Islamist extremists. So you see what I said? They, they'll, they'll use that as a, as a um, precedence or a legality or legal reason. French anti-gay marriage protesters smeared as extremists. So. 
So as the French government is making every effort to delegitimize those who protest same-sex marriage who are seen as ideological enemies by the socialists in power. This is what uh, John Laughlin, political analyst, said. Though the 200,000 protesters who came out to uh, basically protest last month's legalization of same-sex marriage were peaceful throughout the day. The rally ended with tear gas, clashes, and arrests. So again, this is the same old provocateuring. It just uh, gets so tired and sickening. Sweden tries to get a handle on riots. So violence has erupted over the past week around the Swedish capital. So it says here tensions that emerge over joblessness, a growing gap between wealthy and poor, and influxes of immigrants. Unrest may spread across Europe, warns Red Cross chief. So he says here a charity boss worried by effective austerity measures on continents poor, rocketing unemployment and poverty in some areas of Europe could lead to rising civil unrest unless governments take measures to address the humanitarian consequences of austerity measures. So they said, I don't rule out social exclusion, tensions, uneasiness, unrest, because if people don't have anything to do, i.e. talking about the high unemployment in Europe, uh, and if people don't see anything in the future, there is mental agitation, there is political agitation. It brought tears to our eyes. American describes witnessing thousands in Paris march against gay marriage. So this couple, they said they go to France a lot, and they thought it was another left-wing protest. They said they followed the noise and witnessed what she described as pro-family signs. She realized, oh, we're not the only crazy ones, explaining that it's sometimes very difficult to be on the right in America. She says nobody bothered these people, uh, noting that people on the street were giving thumbs up and people in balconies were cheering. She said they were highly organized and had their own security detail. It was such a show of force that was pro-something, not against something. I think it was awesome. French pro-marriage figure committed suicide to protest immigration, not gays, and saluted paganism. So all of France, especially French Catholics, were deeply shocked to hear on Tuesday that their French historian Dominique Venier had shot himself on the uh, set on the mouth of the steps of the main altar in Notre Dame Cathedral. Minutes after, the mainstream media described him as anti-gay marriage activists. So he was instead protesting the massive influx of Muslim immigrants to France, which he considered a form of population replacement. So see, this is this is the key. This is what I'm trying to the point that I'm trying to make. Um, there, I think there's people that are really ticked off about about the number of Muslims that are inside their countries, mostly in you know Europe and that, and they're and they're turning it around the media and making them into Islamophobic um, bigots. And I'm sure there's many of those people in that group, but it could just be that they just happen to be uh, Muslim immigrants. So it's almost as if they, in order to get people really riled up now. They have to actually touch on certain issues like immigration that they don't normally don't want to do. But because people are so concerned about that and the economy, and not so much terrorism, that uh, they have to keep uh, 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 they have to keep the terror card going and the fear card going and related to anything. He said, for 40 years, politicians and governments of all parties, except the National Front as well as employers and the church, worked actively towards this, using every possible means to accelerate North African and African immigration. France will keep troops in Mali beyond 2014, says Defense Minister. So I'm sure that helped, right? Dabbing in France. Hague, remember going back to this article, UK government ready to go it alone, arming the terrorists in Syria. So, diverts attention and it gains, uh, uh, it gains support through engineer consent, whether the people know it or not. EU exit would put US trade deal at risk, Britain warned. Again, this is another issue that's going on. Obama officially said the UK would probably be excluded from the trade agreement worth billions a year if it leaves the euro. Uh, I'm sorry, not the euro, but uh, the EU. Knife attack on soldier in Paris treated as terrorism. Suspected terrorist was freed after UK request. So one of the two men held for butchering a soldier on the London street last week was freed from Kenyan custody at the request of UK officials. Woolwich murder suspect was offered a job with MI5 six months ago. He was followed by MI5 after a trip from Kenya. He said security service was also bugging him. They said they won't leave him alone. And you can go in there and check it out. Another link, Britain's MI5 connection to Woolwich Slasher. Suspicious death of two FBI agents creates controversy. They're involved in killing of the Boston bombing suspect have suspiciously died on May 17th when they fell out of a helicopter into watering and water in a training mill. Gordon Duff of Veterans Today said, it involved uh, everything it had the stamp of CIA and FBI on it. Uh, Ibrahim Todashev's father, my son, was innocent. This is the friend of the Boston bomber. Well, again, the parents sticking up for them, saying they were part of a plot. Undercover FBI agent lured Tunisian student, allegedly to foil terror plot to U.S. It says here they provided money, advice, and the promise of a job if he would come to the United States. 
and a hotel was shut down after a pressure cooker was discovered. They also canceled the banquet of the University of Muslim Association of America. Thank you.